1v1, Sweet Pet No Abuse, by Shilia, the tyrant of the founding state of Great Chu, accidentally lost his only daughter during the war. After frantically recovering it, she immediately transformed into a daughter slave, doting on her even more. However, shortly after the founding of the Great Chu, the national treasury was empty, and civil unrest broke out in various places. The remnants of the previous dynasty were endless. As the daughter of the Heavenly Way, Bai Jie'er was not afraid and said, Dad, don't be afraid, I'm here. Natural and man dot made disasters. The auspicious luck of the Koi Carp is resolved. Fake princesses vying for favor. Make her face swell up. Is the culture of the common people not high? Creating a prosperous era of literature and bringing a hundred schools of thought to contend. However, Bai Jie'er always remembered the advice of the Heavenly Way Mother. To influence the five major villains and stabilize your father's throne. Not long after, more and more fierce villains joined the ranks of the great tyrant, spoiling the little princess by Jier to heaven. Poison Dr. Xuanxiu Crown Prince. Saying that Jier is a fake princess. Don't use your eyes to refine medicine for me. Angry General Third Brother. Who bullied my sister. Leading the army to conquer your whole family. Rebirth of the powerful leader. Bai Jie'er is my younger sister, she cannot cry, otherwise I will have you die. The godfather of the enemy emperor said, if you suffer injustice in the state of Chu, our great Qin will bring you back twice as much. All four villains were dealt with, leaving only the last one, but he didn't want anything, which made the little one feel a headache. The handsome and paranoid young demon lord laughed uncontrollably and said, Child, the world is big, but you are not allowed to go anywhere except in my arms. Come and hug me. Novel keyword. Surprise. The tyrant's group pet cub is the daughter of the heavenly way without a pop dot up window, shocked. The tyrant's group pet cubs are the daughters of the heavenly way. Download the complete set of TXT, amazing. The tyrant's group pet puppy is the latest chapter reading of the heavenly way's daughter. Chapter 1. Princess Returns to the Palace. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 Princess Returns to the Palace. The Great Chu State is in the cold winter of the 12th lunar month, and a raging storm and snow passed through the palace last night, bringing a blanket of silver. At this moment, the heavy snow has stopped, the sky is gloomy, and the cold wind is howling. However, outside the Qingqian Hall in the palace, there were two queues. At first glance, all of them were little girls around three or four years old. Some wear cotton jackets that are warm enough, while others only have three thin singles. Without exception, they eagerly awaited the arrival of their aunt in the Qingqian Hall to announce their entry. The little person standing at the end of the queue has the most charming and charming appearance. My skin is fragile and fragile, as white as snow. My round face and small nose are flushed from the cold. A tiger hat wrapped around her little head, and some of her dark velvet hair was pressed against her forehead, making her eyebrows and eyes sparkle like two black pearls. She dresses ordinary, but she excels in being clean and tidy. At this moment, the little one was eating a cold sweet potato with two small hands carrying meat pits. She is neither noisy nor noisy, just three years old, but she is obedient. The two eunuchs standing not far were shivering with cold. They looked up and saw two tearful little girls led out of the Qingqian Hall by palace officials. The eunuch put his hand into his sleeve pocket to keep warm and said to his companions, The emperor has been on the throne for more than two years, and he has been searching for his wife and daughter with great fanfare for almost a year. Now he has achieved nothing, how can he persist? Companion sighed and said, You don't know that, right? When the emperor fought in all directions, his wife and daughter accompanied him tirelessly. During the war, the family was forced to part ways. Now that he holds great power, he definitely wants to find him back. The eunuch clicked and said, In my opinion, it's probably impossible to find it. Two years ago, the world was so chaotic. 
A woman's family with a child under one year old might have died long ago. Shu. You're not taking your life anymore. The emperor doesn't have any concubines in his harem, and even the position of empress has been kept. It's evident that he has a deep affection for his wife, specifically reserved for her. What's the use of that? The emperor only remembers that the child has red moles on their ears. It's been so long, and every child who comes meets the requirements, but the emperor says no, maybe he's just showing off to the world. The two eunuchs finished speaking and laughed. In the blink of an eye, they saw the little guy standing at the end of the line, who had not finished eating yet. Her face was round and white with a well-behaved expression, and her dark eyes were always focused on her sweet potato. Even my fingertips have turned red from freezing, and I still enjoy eating. The eunuchs walked over and snatched the sweet potatoes from the little man's hand, raising them high. They were already accompanied by the cold, feeling uncomfortable. They didn't even have enough to eat and watched a little child eat. Bringing food into the palace without permission is a serious crime, you are not allowed to eat it. The eunuch scolded with a commanding tone. Anyway, they estimate that none of the little girls in the queue today have the emperor's biological flesh and blood. Simply vent the pent-up resentment and find a soft persimmon that is easy to squeeze. The little person's voice was soft and sticky. She stared at her round black eyes and said, give it back to the nest. The little guy in front of him was delicate and white, looking like he was born into a good family, but the clothes and materials were not expensive. The two eunuchs became even more daring. They threw sweet potatoes back and forth, relying on being taller than this three-year-old baby, but they didn't let her reach them. The anxious little guy reached out his soft little hand and jumped up to grab it. Bad guy, Mud is about to die. She angrily crossed her waist with her little hand and looked up stubbornly at the eunuch. Reading Guide 1. The first QQ reading is readable, with stable 4 updates every day and occasional updates that are explosive too. When the female protagonist is young, she may produce some unclear syllables that can be ignored if not liked 3. Background is fictional, please do not provide evidence. The entire text is permanently free of charge 4. Don't step on it, don't compare it with my first two books. They are both my children and I love them both. Thank you for your support 5. The emperor in this book has no harem and only loves the female protagonist's mother. The family support team is composed of the female protagonist's uncles and brothers seeking tickets, collecting, and receiving 5. Star praise, end of this chapter. Chapter 2. Is full of evil, you must die hard. You are listening at novel full. Audio. Chapter 2 is full of evil, you must die hard. The eunuch who was scolded felt unlucky, and his expression suddenly became vicious. You stinky child, what did you say to me? However, as soon as he finished speaking, he heard the little girls around him exclaiming rapidly. Immediately after, there was a mournful scream. Help me. Before the eunuch could see what was going on, suddenly a bloody severed hand was thrown at the eunuch's feet. The eunuch widened his eyes, his face full of fear, and he fell to the ground. The half-sweet potato in his hand, he took the opportunity to release it and flew out. It landed directly in front of a pair of black boots soaked in a bit of thin snow. Due to the bloody broken hand, the little girls around were frightened and started crying loudly. The eunuch looked up and a thin figure stood not far away, followed by seven or eight people with ferocious ghost masks on their faces. They held on to a man in an official robe, with flesh and blood on his arms, and several cold knives were lying horizontally around his neck. The nearby palace people all retreated and lowered their heads when they saw them, afraid to look again. The eunuch immediately recognized that the person being suppressed by them was Mr. Huang, who had recently gone up in rebellion. Please forgive the remaining members of the previous dynasty. Marquis. I offer my greetings to Marquis. Several eunuchs hurriedly knelt down at the young boy led by him. He is about eight or nine years old. Dressed in a mysterious robe and embroidered with a fierce fighting shura on his chest, 
compared to Shura's crimson and lifelike eyes, the young man's face appeared particularly cold and white. A pair of ink pupils were black and cold, as if absorbing all the colors around them. In his eyes, there was only the cold black and white. He was wearing a cloak and a golden crown, much taller than his peers. At this moment, he lowered his eyes slightly, furrowed his brows lightly, and looked at the sweet potato landing at the front of his black boots with some irritability and displeasure. The eunuch understood and pointed directly at the little guy just now, saying, sweet potatoes are hers. At this moment, without paying any attention to the baby who had broken his hand, he walked towards the young boy with his small feet. She crouched down in front of him and picked up the sweet potato that had fallen in the snow. The sweet potato was already covered in snow, and her bright eyes showed a regretful expression, carefully patting off the snow. The little one caught a glimpse of a small piece of sweet potato meat falling off the boy's boot. She reached out her chubby little finger and silently took it off. This action caused the young man's furrowed eyebrows to light up. At this moment, Huang, who was being pressed down, suddenly exerted his strength and broke free from the constraints. His right wrist, which had just been cut off, was still dripping with blood. He hurriedly ran forward and bumped into the little one, and the sweet potato in her hand flew out again. The next second, a slightly slender and fair hand caught the sweet potato. The little one slumped on the ground, feeling a flash of cold light in front of him. The slender knife worn by the young man on his waist, which had been unsheathed at some point, had already left a bloodstain on Huang's back. Mr. Huang felt pain and crawled on the ground, splashing snow and dust. He was immediately held down by the evil face envoy who rushed up. The young man finally spoke, his thin lips faint, and a hint of cold cruelty between his eyebrows. Take him away, leave the other hand behind, and you can throw him out of the palace. Mr. Huang was dragged and slid out a string of blood soaked in white snow on the ground. His roaring and cursing voice came. Fong Fius, you are full of evil. You will die hard. The boy looked up at him and suddenly smiled. Like a cold mountain melting into snow, with a hint of alienation and rebellion, I accept your auspicious words. Fong Fius lowered his head and noticed that the little guy was looking up at him with a white and greasy face, staring eagerly at the sweet potato in his hand. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Sweet potatoes, should be left for dad to eat. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Sweet Potatoes, Should Be Left For Dad To Eat He raised his eyebrows and looked at the sweet potato in his hand, which was frozen hard as a stone. The little man stood up from the ground and patted the snow on his buttocks. Her watery eyes shimmered and she said, Little brother, next time I'll give you a delicious sweet potato, and I'll give it back to Waba. Her voice is soft and pitiful. In such a dark winter day, Curled eyelashes cannot conceal the bright waves of the eyes. The long knife held by Fong Fius in his left hand was still dripping with blood, but the little person in front of him did not regress or tremble with fear like others. After some thought, Fong Fius still handed out the sweet potatoes, and the little one happily reached out his little hand to take them away. The happy expression with squinted eyes, like a little squirrel jumping in the forest. She smiled sweetly, revealing her tender white teeth and said, Little brother, thank you for helping me out. When you go home later, be careful of the bumpy carriage. Riding a horse is even better. After speaking, she hugged the sweet potato, turned around with joy, and obediently lined up again. Fong Fius looked at her figure, his eyes unfathomable, as if he was thinking about something. Marquis, we should go now. The evil face approached and whispered a reminder. Fong Fius didn't say much and left with a group of people. After they left, the surrounding palaces breathed a sigh of relief. Someone whispered in secret that they were unlucky. How did you encounter these evil stars? After the incident just now, everyone seemed to have lingering palpitations, and neither of the two eunuchs came to harass the little one again. Soon, it was her turn. The two ants standing at the door had thick and round arms, and rudely pulled the little one in front of her, 
directly flipping her earlobes for examination. The emperor once said that his daughter has a small red mole on her ear. He just forgot whether it was his left or right ear. For so many days, many families would rather have two blood points pierced directly on their daughter's ear than risk sending her to the palace. Because as long as recognized as a princess, it is an endless source of glory and wealth. Auntie saw a small red mole on the earlobe of the little guy's right ear. She rubbed it twice directly, with such great strength that it immediately turned the little one's delicate skin red. After confirming that it was not fake, my aunt was about to push her in when she suddenly saw her holding half a sweet potato in her hand. This is not allowed to be brought in. The little one hurriedly hugged him and said, Eight can. I need to take my nest with me, and I want to leave my child for my dad to eat. My aunt tugged at her twice, only to find that the little one was very strong. The palace attendant on the side advised, Forget it, auntie. She's the last one today. Let her in directly so that we can finish our assignment early. In this way, the little person was released and directly pushed into the hall. As soon as I entered the main hall, I was immediately surrounded by warm temperatures. The hot earth dragon was burning inside the hall, blocking out the chilly winters. The ground was covered with high dot quality white jade, which was easy to discern. The little person looked up and saw a huge South China Sea pearl hanging in the center. A person tall golden crane candle set out a path leading to the front in the hall. Gorgeous and dull, with a golden color that dazzles the eyes. An official wearing a blue robe stood at the front, with a huge golden opaque screen standing behind him. He is over thirty years old, with a mustache and a thin figure, but his eyes are very calm. Please provide your name first, as well as your age this year and where your family comes from. The little one blinked his round black eyes at him and said softly, I want to talk directly to the person in the screen behind you. The officials were immediately surprised. How did she know there was someone there? End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Three sentences, prove that I am your cub. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 Three sentences, prove that I am your cub at this moment, behind the screen, the man sitting high on the dragon chair had a deep and imposing demeanor, and his sharp eyes narrowed slightly. The official listened attentively, but the emperor did not speak. He coughed lightly and said, answer my question first. The little one shook his head and said, I'll tell him directly, and I won't waste time. In just three words, I can let him know if I'm his cub. This sentence is like a stone startles the waves. The man behind the screen suddenly raised his sword eyebrows. Officials have seen many little girls in the past nine months in search of their own daughters for the emperor, and none of them are as confident as this little baby. At this moment, a deep and magnetic voice came from behind the screen. Wen Iqing, lead her in. Yes, Mr. Wen waved and gestured for the little one to approach. When the little man walked near him, Wen De was taken aback. Like, it's just too similar. The little nanny in front of me is 7% similar to the portrait of my first wife drawn by the emperor himself. The round water eyes curved their slender eyebrows, and these eyes were black like grapes. When they gazed with a divine gaze, they looked like a night sky. Mr. Wen took the little guy directly behind the screen. Emperor Bai Shilya of the state of Chu was tall and strong, dressed in a tailor dot made dragon robe and unable to conceal his vigorous muscles, making his clothes full. His slightly wheat-colored skin makes him look fierce and strong. At this moment, Bai Shilya was like a resting lion, holding his head and looking at the little guy standing in front of him with his black eyes. To be honest, when she first appeared, he did miss a beat in his heart. Because he looks too much like his beloved wife. However, during the nine months of searching for his daughter, there were also several who looked similar to his beloved wife, and it was ultimately confirmed that they were not his flesh and blood. By Shilya's sword eyebrows were fixed on the superior's strength and dignity. Little guy, how do you plan to use three words to make me believe that you are my daughter? As he spoke, he chuckled and threatened, if you say one more thing, I won't believe it yet, 
so I'll have to throw you out of the palace. The little one was not afraid of him and took a step forward with his small feet. The little hand raised the half-eaten sweet potato. Do you still remember this? Baishilia looked at the sweet potato with a skeptical gaze. The little one has a sticky voice, and his big, watery eyes are agile and obedient. My mother said, when you were still a farmer, the first batch of grain she accompanied you to harvest was sweet potatoes. Baishilia suddenly stood up, his originally narrowed dangerous eyes now filled with shock. His gaze flickered and he walked towards the little one, keep talking. Baishilia's tall figure, like a mountain, cast a shadow down. His throat rolled up and down, his eyes were black and bright, bright and lively, and his thick eyebrows were furrowed. The little man blinked his eyes and looked at Baishilia, mother told Wa that you were all very happy that time. Sweet potatoes sold a lot of silver, but she kept one. That night's dinner was. This time, before she could finish speaking, Baishilia murmured to herself, that sweet potato, half of us, she was afraid I wouldn't have enough to eat, so she quietly kept her half. After Baishilia finished speaking, he squatted down with a faint tear in his eyes. This is his daughter, it's not wrong. No one knows such a detailed past except for himself and his beloved wife. He suppressed his excitement and said, Tell father, what name did your mother give you? The little one obediently replied, Jir, by Jir. Baishilia thought of the past and couldn't control himself anymore, holding his daughter's petite body in his arms. Lord Wen quickly knelt down and shouted, Congratulations to your majesty for finding your royal highness princess. Baishilia's voice trembled and he said, Where is your mother now? Are you still alive? End of this chapter Chapter 5 Are you genuinely looking for me and my mother? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Are you genuinely looking for me and my mother? When his daughter was five months old, it was a crucial period for him to attack the former dynasty. Due to being too chaotic, he lost his wife and daughter and there was no news from then on. Baijia nodded and said, Alive, my mother is doing well. It was she who sent me to find my father. And why wouldn't she appear? My mother said she has something important to do, but there's just a little clever ghost missing from my dad's side, so let me come. Baishilia's eyes were red and he tearfully examined his daughter. He rubbed her hand and found that her delicate little fingertips were all frozen red. The clothes she was wearing were not warm enough, she was the last one to come in, I really don't know how to survive. Baishilia looked at her right ear. To the public, he doesn't remember whether his daughter has a red mole on her left or right ear, but in fact, he's afraid that someone might cheat. The true answer is clear to him in his heart. After the daughter was born, there was a small red mole behind the right earlobe. Now, once again confirmed, he sighed deeply, it was father's fault that made you two women suffer outside. Baishilia picked up Baijir and said to Wendaman, go and pass on my imperial carriage. First, bring the little princess back to my Qianyuan hall. Yes, I will arrange it immediately. Baijir blinked her watery big eyes and asked gluttonously, Daddy, the little eunuch outside said, you're not really looking for a nest and your mother, you're just pretending. Is that true? Baishilia's face darkened as he hugged the little one tightly and covered her petite body with a wide cloak. Fake, in this world, what dad loves the most is your mother and you. He strode away from the palace and looked at a group of palace people kneeling outside, coldly asking, who said such things to you. Baijia reached out her little hand and pointed to the two eunuchs who had bullied her just now. Without hesitation, Baishilia left a sentence. Drag the two of them out and execute them by beheading. At the Qianyuan Hall where the emperor resided, it was more magnificent and grand than the Qingqian Hall just now. The interior decoration is magnificent, even the floor seems seem to be inlaid with gold foil, shining brightly. Baishilia arranged for six palace maids to bathe Baijir. During this time, he stood guard at the door, afraid that his daughter would disappear in the blink of an eye. After the white child is washed, 
the skin will appear more delicate and white, and it can be broken by blowing. On both sides of his cheeks, there was a strong pink tint, making his big eyes appear black and lively. Baishilya personally took the smoking basket and tidied up his daughter's long hair. The little one is very well behaved, occasionally looking up at Baishilya. Baishilya smiled and said, What are you looking at? Wazai is looking at my father. He looks exactly like what we dreamed about. Due to her words, Baishilya's heart warmed. He looked at his daughter, although not dressed very well, but with little hands and feet, it seemed that his beloved wife did not owe anything to the little one. Baishilya asked, Where have you and your mother lived in the past two years? Dad sent people to search everywhere, but there was no news. He searched extensively for his wife and daughter, even offering a reward of a thousand tails of gold and silver, just to obtain their whereabouts. If my beloved wife wanted to reunite with him, she would have come out long ago. If you haven't shown up for so long, I'm afraid you're just avoiding him. Baijia blinked her long eyelashes and said, You can live wherever you go. My mother said you can't find your father because it's not yet time to reunite. If you find your father, you don't want to govern the country, you just want your wife and children to warm up. This is indeed what that woman would say. Baishilya couldn't laugh or cry, without refuting. This was originally his dream. When he rose up in rebellion and led a large army to overcome the incompetence of the previous dynasty, it was just a sentence for his beloved wife. So, why is she willing to send you over first? End of this chapter Chapter 6 Fragrance of Fortune You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Fragrance of Fortune, Because I Have to Help My Dad My mother has predicted that my dad will soon face a big disaster. Baishilya raised his eyebrows and said, Oh! What's so difficult? Baishilya immediately counted with her round fingers, floods, earthquakes, droughts, usurpations, national destruction. Hmm, there are still several more, I don't remember. Baishilya fell silent for a moment. The Chu was the land he hit with his fist. The southern emperor of the previous dynasty was incompetent and unrestrained, and the people were struggling to make ends meet. The country is facing foreign invasion, internal turmoil is rampant, and the monarch of the previous dynasty has done nothing but drink and have fun, trusting treacherous officials. By Shilia's uprising, with courage, attention to detail, and exceptional martial arts skills, won the followers of many famous scholars and generals. However, as an emperor and empress, facing the devastation left by the previous dynasty, there was indeed a shortage and inadequacy in everything. Baijir's hair was almost dry. He picked up his daughter and gently pinched her chubby face. He said in a deep voice, Dad will protect the young child well. No matter what major difficulties we face this time, we cannot let our family separate anymore. Baijir lay on her father's shoulder, feeling a sense of security that her mother could not provide. She nodded contentedly, and within a safe range, the little one felt sleepy. Baishilya still had a lot to ask, but seeing that the little person had already slightly closed his eyes, he didn't rush to ask further. He placed Baishir on his own dragon bed, covered her tightly with a blanket, and sat on the side, silently guarding her. Baishir muttered in a daze, Dad, don't go. Jir walked a long way before seeing you. Baishilya was a fierce and violent person, but at this moment, his entire heart was melted by his daughter's words. His resolute face showed a hint of fatherly kindness, and his big palm slowly caressed his daughter's hair. Over the years, due to my daughter's return, I have finally made up for a small gap in my heart. At night, Baishilya dreamed of the woman he deeply loved, Baijir's mother. Jing Jia. The two still live in the small house in the mountain where they met back then. Baishilya asked in a hoarse voice, If I bring down the world, will you really stay? Jing Jia pursed her red lips and smiled delicately, No, I have something else to do, but I can leave you a reward. What reward? Jing Jia held his hand and pressed it against her heart. 
Her stunning gaze was charming and captivating, like a seductive fairy. But, very focused and affectionate. For example, giving birth to a child for you. The night is deep, and the moonlight cannot illuminate the wide alleys. A carriage fell to the ground in pieces, and the horse pulling it died in a pool of blood, with its body severely fractured and deformed. From the large hole in the wall where the impact occurred, it appears that the horse suddenly lost control and ended up being hit dead. In the event of the carriage overturning, the person sitting in the carriage is likely to be more or less unlucky. However, Feng Fu sat comfortably on Xiang Yu, with his long legs slightly bent and his posture relaxed and lazy. The fingertips resting on the knees were covered with two scars, and blood was slowly oozing out. He looked at the quiet night in the sky, with the mysterious moon hanging high. Quickly, a group of villainous envoys arrived and said, Marquis, are you okay? The carriage in front of them was severely damaged. They checked the horse's head and found that an imperceptible hook had been placed on the reins of the horse. Someone is poisoning the hook and plotting to harm you. Marquis, I will investigate thoroughly. Feng Fius let out a nod, which was considered tacit approval. He rarely uses carriages for his travels. If it weren't for that little guy's reminder during the day, he would still ride back to his mansion today. But since she said that, he really wants to know what will happen when riding the carriage. Looking at the ruins in front of him, Feng Fius raised his eyebrows and his eyes were serene. Is it just intentional homicide? However, how did she know that riding a carriage would lead to danger? Leaving aside these things, the fragrance of good fortune on her body really made him a little hungry. Under the moonlit night, in the dark alley, the young man's long eyebrows entered his temples, and his cold eyes turned inward, filled with darkness and desolation. Like a awakened fierce beast in the wilderness. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Princess Tsuetsua, Unparalleled in the World You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Princess Tsuetsua, Unparalleled in the World the Next Day, by Shilye carried by Jir to court. When civil and military officials, as well as royal relatives, saw the cute little figure in the emperor's arms, they were slightly stunned. There were also several ministers who heard rumors last night and knew that the emperor had found his beloved daughter. However, at this moment, there was also a hint of surprise on his face. For nothing else, just for the emperor to bring his beloved daughter to court, this measure is truly unprecedented. Baishilia was dressed in a bright yellow dragon robe, with a jade crown on his head. He was tall and muscular, with a majestic light in his eyes. He can hold his daughter's small body in his arms with just one big palm. Baijir obediently sat on her father's lap. The civil and military officials had already knelt down on the ground, and followed by Shilia, saying, You all love me. They shouted long live, and when they stood up, their eyes involuntarily looked towards Baijir. The little one is probably just over three years old, with a round and childish face that is smooth and white, as if it can squeeze water out. That pair of bright and clear eyes, as if they could speak, round and dark, like pearls and grapes. As the curled and slender eyelashes flickered, the little one's eyes showed a hint of curiosity. Seeing the ministers, she took the initiative to raise her small hand and wave it, saying, Uncle, hello, the officials were stunned. They bowed and bowed their hands and shouted, Royal Highness Princess, Holy Peace. Baishilia showed a hint of laughter. Respecting the princess can also make him happy. He said in a deep voice, My daughter has been lost for nearly three years, and now she has been recovered. It is truly a blessing from heaven. To thank heaven, I have decided to grant amnesty to the world in the name of the princess. Anyone who commits a minor crime can be released to return home. In addition, I would like to declare to the world that Princess Tsuetsua, by Jir, is my only child and also the only princess of the royal family. The courtiers were taken aback. Princess Tsuetsua, the emperor has even prepared a title. It's true that he's the only child, but there are several princes among the royal family. 
The emperor has several brothers who have all been crowned as kings. But after careful calculation, these princes also have no daughters, they are all sons. Upon reflection, Princess Tsuetswa is truly the only daughter of the Bai family. Led by Bai Shilya's confidant, Lord Wen, he knelt down and thanked the princess for her kindness on behalf of the people of the world. The other officials immediately followed suit and knelt down. Everyone couldn't help but mutter in their hearts. The princess has returned, so what about the beloved first wife that the emperor has been thinking about? Bai Shilya lowered her head and asked with a joyful voice, Child, Tsuetswa, meaning unparalleled grandeur and splendor in the world. Do you like the title chosen by your father for you? Bai Jiyer nodded at her little brain, her eyebrows curved like stars, and said, I like it, thank you dad. Bai Shilya refocused his gaze on the civil and military officials and ordered them to stand up. The court affairs have just begun normally, but today, there is an additional little princess to listen. Bai Jia was holding a candy cake in her hand, eating it slowly. When she was thirsty, she hugged her father's dragon head tea cup and took a sip. Her small face was flushed, round and fair, showing a serious expression. She listened very carefully. The courtiers reported a multitude of things, each of which was enough to cause headaches. Previously, there were wars everywhere, but now that the emperor has ascended the throne for two years, many counties and counties in Chu still await reconstruction, requiring a large amount of silver. But the national treasury is not full, and the vast country is in ruins waiting to be revitalized. At this moment, Guanlu temple minister in charge of diplomacy stood up. He arched his hand and said, Your Majesty, the surrounding small countries are still being harassed by Ruin and the enemy. Do you want to send envoys to negotiate? As soon as Guanlu Temple Chief finished speaking, he was loudly opposed by a rugged-looking tough guy to go back. Joke. Our great Chu country, negotiating with the small country of bullets, will not lower our status. Source of Tsuetswa. People are not Kunchen Jade, but rather Chankikuo. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Three-year-old babies, extraordinary wisdom. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 8 Three-year-old babies, extraordinary wisdom in the court, the courtiers suddenly had a heated argument over this issue. Baishilia didn't say anything, his gaze fixed on the chaos beneath the dragon seat. At this moment, a soft and chubby hand tugged at Baishilia's sleeve. Daddy, Baijir whispered. Baishilia changed his cold and chilly expression on his face and turned to a friendly smile. Good daughter, do you still want to eat something else? Baijir shook her head and said, Daddy, we should send envoys to negotiate. Although the state of Chu is large, Daddy has just ascended the throne and the country is not stable at all. Baishilia was stunned for a moment, and then he patted his palm and chuckled lightly. Looking down at her daughter, her eyes were full of admiration. So childish, I thought of going with my dad. Not long after he ascended the throne, he planned to take this opportunity to show the new emperor's dignity and tolerance to neighboring small countries. Baijir's cheeks were round and extremely pink, and her eyes seemed to be filled with stars in the sky. She smiled sweetly and said, A child is my father's child. Of course, I think the same thing. So, who will my father send? Do you want a good person to choose? Baishilia took the opportunity to point at two of the ministers. The little one stretched his neck to look, his big eyes twinkling brightly. A tall and imposing person, due to differences in political views, argued with the minister next to him with a flushed face and a thick neck. There was another one, with a thin and small body, standing respectfully there, as if everything others said had nothing to do with him, only occasionally raising his eyes to scrutinize the speaker. Baishilia said, the tall and strong person who defected to his father from the previous dynasty voluntarily pledged loyalty. He had previously served as an envoy to the emperor of the previous dynasty and had some skills on him. The person with a thin and small body, everything is good, he is well read and has a brilliant literary talent. Unfortunately, 
His image is thin and small, afraid of being bullied by the country of bullets. After listening, Baijiu blinked her curled long eyelashes and said, Well, Dad, in terms of appearance, a tall and strong minister and uncle has an unstable heart. Besides, since he can betray the original dynasty, it's unlikely that he will have a few different thoughts. Let him negotiate and handle conflicts. It's not acceptable. The little one shook his head. But she turned to the skinny official and said, Choose him. My mother once said, You don't judge a person by their appearance. He just looks small, but he has a clever and quick witted appearance. I remember in the book, it was said that Sanrong and Ruren had less grain and more fresh fruits. Dad might as well ask the envoy's uncle to bring some of their grain seeds for exchange. Firstly, to show the grace of the new emperor, and secondly, with exchange, we can also study and cultivate fresh fruits. For these small countries, they only dare to harass, but dare not come hard. Since that's the case, let's give some benefits first. They will be honest for a while, and they won't dare to come and offend when daddy strengthens the country. Baishilya listened to his daughter's words in his heart. He was somewhat surprised that his three-year-old daughter knew so much. But I am also happy and gratified by the little one's intelligence and charm. I couldn't help but think of my wife whom I hadn't seen in a few years. She taught their daughter very well. Baishilya looked at Baijir with a fatherly gaze, gently caressing her hair with her big palm. Dad just listens to children. After speaking, Baishilya raised his head and solemnly ordered that the thin and small official surnamed Yang be named. He led the envoys, representing the great Chu state, to negotiate with Ruren and Sanro. As soon as the emperor spoke, all the ministers fell silent and looked at Lord Yang. Where did this inconspicuous official win the favor of the emperor? Lord Yang just realized and quickly knelt down and shouted, I will not disappoint what I have entrusted. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Give Uncle a Hug. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 9 Give Uncle a Hug. The morning sun quickly dissipated. Although the problem of offending neighboring small countries has been solved, the shortage of silver in the national treasury is a problem that cannot be solved for a while. Baishilya felt a headache for this and didn't want to show it on his face. However, it couldn't hide from the little one's watery eyes. Baijir's soft and tender fingertips gently rubbed the center of Baishilya's eyebrows. Dad, don't worry, someone will soon take the initiative to deliver the silver. With a child around, everything will come. I will spoil you then. The little one patted his mouth carefully, with a round and tender white face that exuded a cute pink hue. Upon hearing these words, Baishilya's sword eyebrows and starry eyes smiled brightly. He treated what his daughter said as childlike language. She is still young, what can be done is just to make him happy. Baishilya was deeply moved in his heart. He picked up the little one and said, Child, Dad will take you for a walk in the palace. You haven't seen our home yet, have you? The little one draped his meaty arm over his father's shoulder. Well, I've seen it in my dream. Maybe. Dream. Baishilya held her and walked out, with the eunuch and palace attendants following from a distance. Baijia nodded and said, Yes, I was dreaming with my mother when I saw my father, supported and cheered by everyone, climb a high step and ascend the throne. Dad, let me tell you a little secret. When my mother saw it, she cried happily. Upon hearing these words, Baishilya's words immediately froze and his gaze became complicated. He got lost with his wife and daughter while fighting for the world. Climbing onto the throne of the Nine Five, as he looked at the group of people kneeling in the darkness below, he suddenly felt a sense of melancholy in his heart. Because at that moment, he always felt that he should hold his wife's hand, hold their children, and be worshipped together. Unfortunately, she is not here. But unexpectedly, Baijiu said they could see through dreams. Baishilya suddenly remembered that Jingjia had also shown extraordinary methods, like a fairy. 
Not only does divination bring good fortune and misfortune, but it is also effortless to summon wind and rain. He never had a chance to figure out her identity. Once upon a time, whenever asked, Jing Jia would jokingly say, I am the Heavenly Empress. She refused to tell the truth, so Bai Xiliye simply stopped asking. Anyway, what does it matter if he loves her, whether it's a fairy, a demon, or a person? Bai Xiliye lowered his head and hugged his daughter tightly. The dragon robe was supported by his solid muscles without any cracks, and his wheat-colored healthy skin highlighted his black eyebrows as sharp as a sword, and his eyes were burning. The whole person has a wild tension. But with his daughter in his arms, by Shilya's cautious appearance exuded Iron Man tenderness everywhere. Child, after a few years, if your mother is willing to come back, our family of three will be reunited. Before that, my father will govern the country well, make the world peaceful, and give you two a guarantee. Bai Jia's delicate little face was flushed, and she nodded heavily. Hmm dad, I'll be with you, waiting for your mother to come back together, he said with a sparkling expression in his eyes at this moment, a loud call came from behind them, brother. Bai Xilie looked back and his smile faded slightly. What's up, third brother? Bai Jia looked with a clear gaze. I saw the visitor wearing a spacious robe, adorned with countless jade ornaments, truly embellished with wealth and glory. He has a similar face to Bai Shilia, but not as strong and determined as Bai Shilia. The difference in physique makes this person appear a bit thin. He ran nearby and was about to speak when he saw Bai Jir in Bai Shilia's arms. Big eyes, slender long eyebrows, cute and watery, like someone's New Year painting doll. Oh my! Is this just a child? Come on, let Uncle San hug you. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Encounters this human evil star again. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Encounters this human evil star again. He opened his arms and pounced, but by Shilia, with a cold face, hugged by Jir and turned to avoid his bare pounce. Bai Xilie guarded his movements and said to Bai Jir, Jir, this is King Kong, my father's third brother, your Uncle Wang. Uncle San, the little one sweetly called out. Kong Wang was taken aback for a moment and immediately burst into laughter. You are so well behaved, do you remember? When you were just born, Uncle Wang hugged you. Bai Xilie protected his daughter with a big hand and said, how could she remember that the child was only one or two months old at that time? Bai Jia blinked her long eyelashes and looked at King Kong curiously, my mother told me about Uncle San. Oh! King Kong suddenly became interested. What does sister dot in dot law say about me? The little one said, my mother said that Uncle San always likes to see beautiful women. When Aunt San finds out, he will be beaten and will hide under his parents' bed several times, surviving through cracks. King Kang's smile froze, and then he awkwardly chuckled twice, Ah! You're right. Bai Shilia suppressed his smile and asked, Tell me, what do you need to do with me? Hurry up and finish it. I still have to take my child to the park. King Kong coughed lightly and remembered the main matter. Brother, did you have the imperial censor Huang's family copied? Yes, Bai Xilie responded lightly. King Kong scratched the back of his head and said, His family has a daughter who is said to be as beautiful as a flower, but she is weak and sickly. My younger brother knows that I have always loved beautiful women. Can you send her to my palace? I have no other intention, it's just that I can't bear to see a well-behaved beauty suffering from illness in this cold winter month. Bai Shilia sneered, as if he had already seen through his intentions. Do you want it? Go find Marquis Wanzong yourself and see if he is willing to let people go. King Kong stomped his feet and frowned his face, saying, Brother, aren't you making things difficult for my younger brother? Marquis Wanzong, Feng Fius, that's famous for not showing mercy. Don't look at him being eight years old. Last time, I begged for another beautiful maid. He chopped off the maid's finger in front of me. My younger brother is afraid, except for begging you to speak up, 
how dare I ask him for someone? Baishilia took the opportunity to cover Baijir's ears, unwilling to let her hear the bloody and cruel things. His tone was indifferent and he said, I advise you to die of this heart. The Huang family speaks for the previous dynasty, and I will save their lives. It's just a case of plagiarism and exile, which is already very kind. There are beauties all over the world, but a virtuous wife is rare. Third brother, it wasn't me who trained you. Third siblings have been with you until now, enduring hardships and cherishing their wives and children. King Kong wanted to plead, but Baishilia's attitude was incredibly firm. Don't plead for mercy over this matter anymore. We can't discuss it. Besides, I'll beat you dozens of boards and make you lie at home honestly. King Kong had no choice but to give up in frustration. When he lifted his head, he happened to face Baijir's two sparkling big eyes. This cute and transparent little person. King Kong couldn't help but hold out his hand and said, Brother, I don't know what it feels like to be hugged by my younger brother and have a daughter in his arms. Baishilia turned around and left holding Baijir. If you want to hug me, go give birth on your own. This is my daughter. Baijir lay on her father's shoulder and waved her little hand at King Kong, saying, Uncle San, goodbye. King Kang's face lit up with a smile and he quickly waved, Jir, come to the Wong mansion to play when you have time. Uncle Wong asked your brothers to ride horses with you. Until the figures of Baishilia and Baijir were out of sight, King Kong reluctantly turned around and left. However, as he turned around, he saw a young man standing in the shadows of snow and branches, watching coldly. King Kang's figure suddenly froze. Fong Fius, this mortal malevolent star, how could he have encountered it again? Hi babies, I'm Tian Kanji. The third daughter, Bai Jir, was born. I hope she can grow up with you. I hope she can thrive under the protection of Bauer and Noor. If you see this, please give a five-dot star review and vote. The growth of our little baby requires our joint care and dedication. End of this chapter.